I'm not opposed to the word empathy, but it's caught up in so much emotional baggage, so much of this cuteness idea, bigotries, prejudices, ego stuff, stuff that looks like us, you know, where, where it's more directly, we can feel the pain because it's more like, oh yeah, I can see how I could fall into that circumstance, so it's more personal you know, are extended, I care about somebody kind of thing, so I have empathy. I have to care about them first before I can manifest the empathy. But it's an emotional word, and I'm just saying I don't need the word to make my argument. You don't need to have empathy, all right, to recognize the circumstance, to recognize there's a victim, and I'm not allowed to harm the victim. I'm not allowed to abuse the victim. I don't have to like them. I don't have to think they're cute. I don't have to... I don't have to have any connection to it whatsoever to acknowledge my responsibility not to cause it harm. The properties of sentience, that's what's being described here, okay? We're describing reality, not describing what you feel, not describing how you think or all that kind of crap. We're describing a real circumstance. We're saying, okay, we're conceding. This is the gasoline that goes in the engine and this is what the engine supposedly is producing and I can argue that there is nothing being produced, the wheels are just spinning but let's just say we have spinning wheels and there's a certain logic to reducing how much gasoline you have to put into this thing to make it do whatever it's doing so regardless of what it's doing and whether what it's doing is valuable or not the simple argument is, is you want to use as little gasoline as possible expand and waste as little suffering as possible is this nothing else? Far stretch is how you described it. You think it's a far stretch for me to um, describe property, the property of feeling, sentience, the property of negative conscious states, and to simply look at the ocean or look at any other thing, any other events happening in the world and saying, that's a bad thing, that's a bad thing, that's a bad thing. Red number, red number, red number, red number. So what we're arguing here about is not the red numbers, apparently. We're arguing about the black numbers. You're saying that the fact that elephants are, you know, pointlessly <laughs> satisfying their hungers that are driving them, driving them, whipping them, essentially, to keep marching on and doing things that they have no control over. They don't choose to reproduce, you know. That somehow that magnificent death march that all animals are on is somehow so fantastic and great that it's worth all of their suffering. So that's the thing. You're basically acknowledging their suffering. You're saying, I can't do much about it because it's the way nature is. And then on top of that, you're saying, and I think the whole little pageant is beautiful. The parade is marvelous. You're not going to make a rational argument explain to me how the elephant's desire is more important than the non-existent Martian's desire or the non-existent Venetian desire. How come the, the, the non-existent Venetian desire isn't a tragedy and the non-existence of the elephant's desire would be a tragedy? And what I'm saying is if you don't make the elephant, you don't got to put the blood into it. The potential for the red numbers to spill all over the fucking road into the organism, you don't have to consume any gasoline. There's no need to pour gasoline in it. There's no need to turn the key. And you can save yourself all that red number production by simply not turning the key.